a go khona go sa khonega a go sa khonega gore history ya 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 greke ye ingwadiwe maina le na ska ba tswelela ka gare go ona e sa khonega that is why le ge re itswa ba re bitsa ka ka ba re tlang ka ka le ge ba re bitsa gana jole gana jole botse khutse wa ra lo ka kwa le ring se se moyeng gana jwa le ka 11 ka mogono re le ka mokritlo le ga ra lo ka kwa maina re na a gare a tswelela eskreke wa tsa mlebetsi ba re yo a botse opela kae o mongwe maybe ya facebook o mongwe comment a re kwa god's wait ba ra nna ba ra wena motse mo lokile motse mo dira tshe di botse so shine greke ya motse mo shine shine jesus shine shine holy spirit shine shine our father god shine papa gore na shine hallelujah shine le di branch ya gore na shine hallelujah re le boga motimo amen Greke are not seven years old, but are not living testimony. Chevi makata, muti makuta so fat. Amen. Are you going to learn to learn muti mu? Let's go to the word of God. Today we are going to learn 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 and the car you are now got tell it about if you listen carefully and in those of messages if you can listen carefully what about something god was on out though come something good it ring kere ganya ne ke phose mo kere e o ka go pula kwa morago ne re re ra me laetsa re tlhore bolela re re me laetsa modimo re prepare la something le a go pula re bolela re itswa kwa morago modimo are holiness are ge ba tshuba se holy ge ba ka se ke ba mphelela ge ba ka se ke ba nhlompha ge ba ka se ke ba ntshaba ba mpoifa jo le ka modimo wa bona ko re yang ba ka se gono tsena re a go pula ke e le serisa ke ra ya go serisa yang ya blessings modimo are ke na le tshofa jo left right and center o ska e mela ro go o tlo credit tshofa jo go di mondi go gona gona jo le mo le fasing o ka di khumana le wena amen ra tshela pele gape ko re series by series ra ya are knowing your identity o gona bona re modimo o gare o dira something o agelela somewhere amen so lo ana bia le ge modimo a re gore na re bolela nka magomo a ka nke le batsebisho re batho ba gore ba ntsebe gore ba mpone ka le manoga le litseng go hlokagala lo tsheditseng ka ra maphelo a bona modimo a khutswa re se go fatsha that is why we root on the dimensions of god bona wana mo rena modimo ka sule wa mona mo fetch you will never see god and finish him amen e a ikhonege that is why the Bible says to us, the elders in heaven, the elders in heaven, they bow down, they worship him. And uh, interestingly enough, every day and night, in other words, they, they do not have time to rest. Um, it means that when they pause, um, they say, Is that God? Is that God? And then it something else here so that they don't know Amen. may the good god bless us so you can never fully know god so all you need to do fill yourself with the knowledge of who he is so that we every so time. that can re- recognize every time the new dimension that he brings about. Every time when he shows you that I'm a merciful God. When he shows you that I am a kind God. So that you can recognize it and see it. Because then you will be aware. This is another dimension. This is another character. And it gives you what? That calculation to worship him further because you didn't know something more about him in other words I believe the Lord is taking us to a place 
stilong yongwe. Where we can be able to worship him. Whether it's kind, whether it's good, whether it's rainy, whether it's cold. Eh, gosa fiti shishoko rupula iyana kuba ubu utu kuba kuna le madim. Every season of your life. You will be able to worship God. Because I believe. That is why God is emphasizing. Know that I built this work. And I called you into this work. And he's not saying me. He's saying he called you. You, 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 you. God has called you here. God has called you individually. When mama, mama says, God called us one by one. To be here. To do what? To build this ark. We are not building it for him. We are building it for us. When we are in it, we are protected. When we are in it, we flourish. We flourish. When we are in it, blessings are galore. When we are in it, the waters will keep carrying us. The same waters that are drowning others. They will lift us up. That is why this ark is being built. And that is why when it was built, you saw every member of the family of Noah building, doing their part. Doing their part. Now, I want you to ask yourself now. After this messages that you have had been preached here, in this very ark where you are seated now, are you starting to do something or see yourself as a part of it? Are you seeing yourself contributing here? Listen here. The biggest problem that we face today. That's the, I hope you are starting to take your notes because me, I'm just gone. I'm gone. I don't use big English. What is to scribble? Just tell the people. Amen, Mary. You know you are there at university. We know. I just better my over here. <laughs> uh, I, I get marry my daughter. The reason why I always want you to interpret is because in one word I can lose somebody. Just one word I, I can lose somebody, isn't it? So don't go too much with that university English of yours. Come back, isn't it? Right. So one of the problems that we have today I see many Christians, they are ashamed to be called Christians, man. You know, Christians are no longer bold to say, I am a child of God. You know, they cannot say, I am saved. Let, let's take my son there. Papa, there are by university since you start coming here. Your friends, which are we where do you tell them you're going? Hey, Grawena. Or one of them is gone. Where? Eh? They don't know, Agir. Aha. Aha. You see what I mean? How many of you can boldly say, now I'm saved? How many of you can boldly say it? And the world know what we're now pulling and live in that salvation. Boldly carry your head up high every day. Hmm? Without being shaken. Yes. How many of you? You know, I'm not sure to be honest with you. The kind of Christians that we are raising now. The apart plant kind of Christians. Pot plant kind of Christians. Amen. Amen. 
me just know me by now. Isn't it this is a pot plant? Do you see it? Do you know where it will grow up to? It will grow up to here. Only in this plant. It will never go anywhere. It will never grow beyond this. You, it wants to eat. It wants to eat. You must come and feed it. If the plant is in the ground, it feeds from the ground with the roots. But because it is in here, its death is quickly. It needs you to feed it. It cannot get water from the ground. It must get water from you. Those are the Christians we are raising today. They have no roots. spread. And the biggest problem is because shame, shame, shame upon their lives. Shame upon them. Shame upon their lives. Shame to be, to be known as a child of God. Shame to be associated with the church. to be associated with their church. For people, for people to know you that you are the member of God's weight. Hey, that is the end of you. They no more invite you for parties. They, according to you, they will never invite you in the things that you are supposed to do with them anymore. Children of God, let us stop being shameful. Let us stop being shameful about Christ. Do you know that this very Christ you are shameful about? This very gospel that you are shameful about. It is, uh, Paul says about it. He says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Romans chapter 1. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power, because it is the power of God that brings salvation. To us, to everyone who believes. To everyone who believes. How can you be ashamed of salvation? How can you be ashamed of God? Yet you expect salvation from him. Let us not be ashamed of being known as the children of God. The same way that the devil operates with shame in your life. The way he's making you feel so shameful. He is doing it with the gospel. What is he doing? He is, you know, every time that he comes to testify to you, coming to tell you how you did this in your past. Hey, you did this in 19, mama, mama. Are you aware every time the devil starts that you shrink? You no longer have confidence. It becomes the same with your salvation. Every time that the devil brings salvation as a shame to you, the power of the word diminishes in your life. The power of the word diminishes in your life. Uh, uh, the power of the word. And yes, the power of God diminishes. The Apostle Paul says in the book of Corinthians chapter 1. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. The 
the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. They see it as foolishness. the word of God They see the word of God as foolishness. They see God as a fool. So never allow yourself to, uh, to have shame over God. Never allow yourself to have shame over your salvation. Because that is the beginning of you. Never realizing the power of God. Also never realizing the power of the word of God. You know this is a trick that the devil uses. To bring you to be unable to commit to God. A person should be committed to God. Mutu must be anchored to something in his or her life. Mutu sanjure. Sessing what in your life. So if you are not committed to God, it's unlikely that you will see the power of God. You will never see his power. Because he is shameful to you. Your association with him is shameful. Then you will never proclaim him. You will never speak of him. How? Because you are ashamed. How do you speak the power of the word? How do you speak the power of the word? Uh-uh. No, it's not right. Please, it's not right. And just be mindful. Just be mindful. Please, So you do What is that? You can't do that, guys. You can't. Please, every day and then and then Please, please. So you can't proclaim the power of the gospel. So you'll never see the power of God. That is something that the devil wants you to always live in. Never allow yourself to have an uncommitted relationship with God. You must be in You must be tied with God. Very tied. And how is that best? It comes from you delighting in God. Delighting in God. Let's read the book of Psalm chapter uh, 37. Chapter 37. The, chapter 37, verse 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Mm. Delight yourself also in the Lord. You see, if you delight in God, it is easy for you to see the way God wants you to see him. It becomes easy for you to see the power of God in your life. And let me tell you, that is how commitment is born. When you see people here every Sunday, and you see people here every week, Coming for prayer. Coming to the midweek service. It's because they have started to delight themselves in the Lord. I want to give you a simple picture. You know when I started my relationship with pastor. 
When I started getting to know him, I was delighting in who he is. You know, I would sometimes just find myself marveling at him. I would just look at him and be I would just look at him in disbelief. Unbelieving how this man is so good to me. Unbelieving how this man is showing me such respect. I ask any person who is in a marriage. And I'm talking about a healthy one. They never stop delighting in their spouse. It does not mean that the spouse is perfect. Yes, the spouse has their weaknesses. But they always look at the joyous side. Because of that delight, because of that joy always, a commitment is born. It moves now from being a position of we are having a relationship. It moves now to a place of we are tied together for life. It's no longer about I can just go away anytime I want. You realize that I've got a commitment and a responsibility to this person. That is exactly what it means for us to be in a committed relationship with God. That is how you get in a committed relationship with God. You delight yourself in Him. You love Him. You know, coming to church won't feel like a burden to you. Reading the word won't feel like a burden to you. Coming to prayer will not feel like a burden to you. You know, fellowshipping with him will never feel like a burden to you. Why? Because you are delighting yourself. In other words, you're being next to this person. You being close to God. You always being in fellowship with Him. Is something that brings consistent joy in your heart. And because it brings joy to your heart. It makes you always joyous about God. Let's be honest here. There are people that you know when you think about them you just go, yo. Because they tire you, isn't it? And then there are people that you know what, I just think about them and I go, Eish, that one man. Because you enjoy their company. You enjoy their presence, isn't it? Amen. You enjoy being with them together. That is exactly what you must aspire for with God. It must never feel like you are carrying something heavy when you walk with God. It must never feel like, yo, I'm going to church, yo, today, ah, yo. It must never feel like, yo, I'm going to church, yo, today, yo. It must never feel like, yo, I'm going to church, yo, today, ah, yo. That way you end up coming here for, for us to take the register that you are not absent. But what about the verse in the book of Hebrews that says Nothing is hidden from God. If you are not committed to him, God knows it. You can come here with us. Every Sunday. Every prayer. But you find your heart is far. God knows it, he sees it. You can come here to us. But you come here as a burden. Hey, let me just go. I'm just going to hear stories again if I don't go. 
As we don't see it when you come here. But God, he knows the state of your heart. Now I want to give you a simple example. And since we've been preaching this series, I think you have heard about this many times. Pastor said the other day, Pastor Mwepe. He talked about Moses. And he said, Moses, no one uh, 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 was forcing him. He went to the mountain to be with God. God called Moses. God called Moses. And Moses went. He had the option to say no. But his presence with the Lord it was something that he wanted. And because he delighted in that presence it did what? Transformed his life. It changed his appearance. The more fellowship he spent with God then the, the presence of the Lord rubbed off on him. What about the young man Joshua, the son of Nin? The Bible says to us, whenever the cloud of God came down, and God spoke to the Israelites, and they dispersed. But they dispersed. The Bible says when they left the tent, Joshua remained. Joshua no one called Joshua to stay behind. He stayed behind of his own accord. And what did that do? Brought him into a closer fellowship with God. So, I want to tell you this. How do you delight in the Lord? You delight first in his presence. It doesn't help you now. Let's get that one clear. Being in his presence. When we come here to the house of the Lord, I see so many people here. Some appear so sad. We are standing here. This guy is an iron butikucho. We stand here. We look at you. Guys, people seem so sad in the church. You, you know we worship the Lord. We bow down and we say, Holy is the Lamp of God. Holy is the Lamp of God. Seated on the throne. And we say, worthy, worthy, worthy you are. That holy, holy, holy you are. That mighty, mighty, mighty is your name. That Father, no one is like you. Amen. That Father, we have never seen anyone like you. And in all of that mist, as we join the elders in heaven, as we join the angels in heaven, people still have the luxury of being upset in the church. You, 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 it's like we are offending them. We worship, they stand. They look at us, they don't know what to say. They don't know what to do. You ask yourself, how are you delighting in the presence of the Lord? In the presence of the Lord. Isn't it the book of James says to us, he says, draw nearer to God. So that he may do what? So when you don't draw nearer to God, you stay far away from him. You let your heart wander around. You let your mind run amok. During a time of fellowship, there's nothing that brings you joy. There is nothing that makes your heart skip. You will be here. We will be worshiping. We will be lifting his name. You will be not experiencing anything. That way. 
you are far from God. Let me, let me tell you. There is nothing that will bring God nearer to you. Unless you take the step to go to him. People sometimes say. God has turned his back on me. God does not turn his back on anyone. God does not leave anyone. You have turned and walked away. That is the reality. When you walk away from God, then what is God supposed to do? He leaves you there. The day you decide that you want to come here, and then He will come nearer to you. Isn't it there is that song? Isn't that there is that song? That is Ringo, I think he says, Sondela, Standa, Sondela. Amen. You would bring God closer. Amen. You, when you say Sondela, and you go to him, you see him coming towards you. You, you block him. Uh -oh, there is nothing that is going to happen. One way for you to delight in God. One way to be to, to delight in God is to be close to Him. You can't walk over there. You can't walk over there. And then God's word, what's a yela? You know nothing about the church, isn't it? Amen. You know nothing about us, isn't it? Amen. How can we bring joy to you when you know nothing about us? Exactly my point. Amen. You want to know us. You know right now many people are making assumptions. It's because they don't know us. You want to know us. You want to experience what we are all about. It's only one thing for you to do. Come to our church. That's how you start to know us. It's exactly the same with God. Amen. The good Lord bless you. Another way for you to know the Lord. You need to delight, number one, in his works. Be delight in God's way. When we are having a project here, be happy about it. Understand that according to Philippians number one. No, according to Philippians chapter two. Everyone who is here serving the Lord, everyone who is here doing something for God, the Bible says that it is God who works in you. Both to will and to do his good pleasure. Amen. It's true. It's correct. It's the, it's the petty version. Amen. Amen. It's God who enables the people to come and serve him. It's the people who come here every day. And when you start to delight in his work, you won't wake up and feel like I collect a million program. Yes, say it. We have food at home. Now we have heard many kinds of things being said here, church. Some have said now we're not here. Some said that at their homes they eat. And we just said, no, it's fine, we understand. You don't have to come. Because it's obvious you haven't grasped it yet. When you have tore it, when you have grasped grasp it, yeah, then you start to know. I guess so you collect a meal. I'm not boosting about uh, collecting. I guess so you collect a crack. I guess so you collect a crack. I guess so you collect a prayer. I guess so you collect a prayer. You look at all the people where God had projects. And God calls someone to do something in that project. People have had the luxury to say no. Thinking that was the person who has called them. What did, not, uh, what did the husband of Abigail do? When, when David comes and asks for help, he refused to help. Not aware. He's not refusing David and the Israelites' help. 
He's refusing God help. You go and look at the book of Exodus. You go and look at the book of Numbers. What did the king of Edom do? Sorry, what did the king of, Am of the Moabites do? Yes, what, what, what he did was when the Israelites wanted to cross the land. They, not the land. They went to him. They said, can we please cross by your land? They said, we will walk straight. We will not even drink the water. We will not even take the fruits. We will do nothing. We will just walk straight, looking straight where we are going. What did he say? He said no. He refused. He what did the result become? God later on says to Moses. He says they must be destroyed. And God never forgot what they did. Go and read your Bible carefully. Ahead of the Bible from the book of Numbers. Even in the days of Samuel, the Amalekites, their battle with the Israelites didn't start then. God says to, 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 to Saul, because I never forgot what they did. When I wanted a uh, the Israelites to be rescued. To be helped. They refused to help. Just like I'm telling you now about the Moabites. So every time you refuse to do something that God says do. Every time you don't take pleasure in the work that God is doing. You are building a barrier between you and him. Now listen to me carefully. Delight in what God is when doing. When you see people out there for children. Delight that people are here for collecting meals. You know, instead of feeling hey, but we have a failure, happen say God, we thank you. Instead of saying these people are, 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 are so many and we want to go home. Rejoice. Uh, say, God, we thank you. Your work is progressing. Uh, Your mandate is being fulfilled. You, you said the people, people must be fed. But the people are being fed. When you go and you find Mamruti not at church, you don't say she's always gone. Now she thinks she's smart. Now I'm not they started with us. intercession, metro. She doesn't have our time. No, 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 no. You say, Father. Our, 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 so you rise up in the morning and you say the work of God is progressing holy be the Lord May the glory be unto God. Sometimes you see people here. When they are here, we pray for them. I saw Mama, yes, she was yes, she left her cane. Those who don't delight in the Lord, who are not committed to God, who are not committed to His works, they just say in their hearts, Ah, wow. Who knows your soccer di camera? I saw. Yes, who knows your soccer di camera? 
When she's outside, she'll be holding her stick. When we stand here, we say we testify. About the deeds of the Lord. You know that people say to us about collecting me. Uh, do you know that uh, many people say about us that we are arrogant about uh, collecting me? You know that people have said to us about the church that Renarna are smart. Could you do something? And it's not only our church. There are many churches that are doing good. But we are the things that people talk about those, those projects. Not this community. Don't don't cross a fight. I'm saying, hear how the bad people talk about those good projects of God. They say, no, they want to buy people with the meal. They say, the place that we give to people is to buy them to come to church. They say, when you close the poor, they say, yo, baba, reka kadi aparo. Isn't it you also know you had this even around here, isn't it? Amen. But isn't the pastor? Amen. I guess you know even here they were saying that. But now I want to tell you this. It's because they don't delight in what God is doing. Always delight in the works of the Lord. When you see God healing, glory be to the name of the Lord. When you see the Lord moving, holy is the Lord. When you see the Lord doing wonders, taking children to school, healing the sick, feeding the community, touching the lives of young children, you say, God, you are able. You say, there are the works of my father. These are the works of my Lord father. The one I know. He is able. I know him by this. Instead of being bitter. You, uh, some people they say. But some people will say um, they give people clothes but we fellowship with them but they don't give us. We never said our membership here is in exchange for a shirt or a school uh, uniform. And just so that you remember, here we are God's word at work ministers. We are not snappers, eh? It's not snappers here. We are God's word at work. So don't appreciate the work of God for what it can do for you personally. Don't appreciate the work of God for what it can do for you personally. No, just because we are not going to benefit from joy. No, we are from Yona. It's a bad. Amen. That's how you delight in the Lord. Amen. That's how you start to see that this is a miracle working God. That is how you start to see that this God is so capable. That is how you start to see that, Mother, my God, all of this, it's your hand. You know what that does to you? When you have your own challenges. You start to understand that this God, if every week 700 people in the community can manage to get a plate of food from a small church like this, my sickness is nothing. My God will heal me. My looking for a job is nothing. My God will provide a job for me. And many of you, let me tell you this. You are looking for jobs. I am speaking in the prophetic now. I am speaking in the prophetic now. Some of you, your jobs are here. You are supposed to work here. And get a salary here. Yes. Amen. So you are busy out there. Ridiculing the church. 
You don't know. You are ridiculing your employer. You are ridiculing your employer. I can tell you now. I can even point to those people who are supposed to work here. And one of them is not even here today. I'm telling you now. This is not a joke. You will believe it the day you see. You see it with your mouth, with your eyes. I used to tell you long ago. I said to you, when are you going to grow up? In other words, I was saying, when are you going to get out of the pot plant? Didn't I tell you, I say, there's going to be a day when I won't be here? Didn't I tell you? And I told you, I said, another time you'll see me maybe once or twice a month. Didn't I tell you? The other time I said to you, a time is coming, you'll see me four times a year. You remember I said this? Amen. When I was talking, it was like a joke, right? And I just tell the truth. I saw Marapoji, she was saying yes. Amen. When I was saying it was like a joke, right? Even now I'm telling you, a time is coming, you will see me four times a year. You will be crying for me. And now you see me like a joke again. Again. Again is singing for you now. A day is coming when you will excel as a clap and tap church. It'll be nowhere to be found. They'll just be playing like this. You hear me again? You'll just be playing like this. There'll be no one to sing here. He will be the one frustrated there. I agree you saying to me, Mamruti, you know, it's costing me. You say it's frustrating because I can't sing and, and play at the same time, especially when I lead. You say that, isn't it? Brace yourself. That day is coming. So all of these things, they seem like they'll never happen. The more the work of the Lord increases, the more you delight in what God is doing, is the more you're going to see the great works of the Lord. You are going to see the great works of the Lord. Today you think what you're seeing is great. The day we move out of Mukuku, we come to this building. You were saying, oh, our church has a building. You, th you thought it was the end of the world. Agar. The day that you saw us moving out of the shack, eh, coming in this eh, hall, you thought that eh, our church is beautiful. Then you heard us go to Muleti. You thought, yeah, we have achieved as a church. Then one, two, three, we go to Tobela. You say, ah, our church is arrived. Do you, see that, do you see that every time you delight in what God is doing, he does more? When you were thinking we arrived at Tobela, God opened the door in blue for ten at least you think we have arrived at Lissadi? Go say, go to Metro FM. You think we have arrived at Metro FM? God say, go to Morning Life. Go and shoot a documentary for SABC3. Go to this program. Go to that program. Go to that program. All over. That's why I'm telling you now. Never despise the small days of beginnings. Whatever small thing God does, hold on to it. Cherish it. Cherish it. Hold on to it. Praise Him for it. Because you are opening a door to greater things, greater testimonies. I'm just just Delight in the works of the Lord. You know who branch when you hear that uh, a certain church has a branch delight, you know that we have prayed for other churches here. You know we are sitting at home, we see a tent pitched here. 
It, it told me what move. It told me what. I've never wept when I saw another pastor come here. I've never cursed when I saw another pastor bring a revival here. I've always said in my heart, Father, thank you. Those who are afraid of coming to our church, that door, they won't escape it. I always said, Father. But woman said, "You are a people. The community of Manchester is men. We cannot." We now you have brought someone to help us. I said, "Glory to you, O oh God." Thank you for what you are doing. The good Lord bless you. Delight always in what God is doing. Never ever allow yourself to be shameful about the acts of God. May the good Lord bless you. Delight in his love. You know the book of Ephesians says to us. The Apostle Paul says. He says he's praying for them. He says he's praying for them. That they may, he's praying for them. That they may have power. Um, okay, let me see. That they may be able to comprehend. That they may be able to understand. That they may be able to comprehend. With all the saints, what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which, which surpasses all knowledge? Mo apostol Paulo re mo go bona ore. Ke a rapela. Mo apostol Paulo re go bona ore ke a rapela. I pray. O ka re le ka fitlhella ko go tseba mahomo. O ka re le ka fitlhella ko go tseba mahomo. I wish you can know the I depth. wish you can know the dimensions of God. The width of God. He says I wish you can know the length, the depth and the height. You know some people God loves them. And I'm not saying God loves some people. I'm saying some people they don't even know. It's, they don't even appreciate. Even if they don't even, you know, it, it doesn't even shake them a bit. That God loves them so much. They don't even understand who they are before the eyes of the Lord. They don't even understand that God so loved the world that He gave His only Son to die for us on the cross. If you start to understand the love of God for you, if you start to understand how God sees you, condemnation will never exist in your life. In your life. You'll never condemn yourself. You'll never curse yourself. I am made of love. I am a product of love. When you see me, you see the love of God. When you see me, you see the creation that God took his time to make. You start to understand. I am greatly loved. A great sacrifice was paid for me. I was bought not with silver and gold. Not with silver and gold. But with a price. That's how you start to understand the love of God. You start to even love others. And you know what that does to you? It starts to make you see the love of God that is in his character. You are no longer a person that becomes full of hatred for other people. You know, I'm sorry to say this. Yes, yes. There are Christians who hate other people. And you can be so amazed at them. 
Who is this God who says he's love? You look at them and you see the hatred and the vileness in them. We get at it. Then you look at them, you say, Hey, Maria. I've heard people say, Marakim Zalano Mujang. What kind of a Christian is this one? It's because they are amazed. What is flowing from your heart? What must flow from your heart? is the love of God. For people always. For people always. Regardless. Myself, I'm one person. I will always try. And I want to encourage you to always try. Whenever you interact with someone, let them take away the character of God from you. I'm not claiming that I'm perfect. But I want to tell you this. The fruit of the Holy Spirit must be visible in you. You are a, a letter that is working red inside and outside. What are people reading? Can they see the love of God in your life? Hallelujah. Amen. Apostle Paul says he prays that this love fill us. You know that God loves us even when we make such stupid mistakes to him. Even to him. Time and again. How many times did God, you know, Go to the one to destroy the Israelites. Do you know how Moses delighted in the works of God? He also delighted in the love of God. You know, Moses was the one to remind God how God loves the children of Israel. When God said, these stiff-necked people, I'm destroying each and every one of them, I'll start afresh. Moses was the one who said, no. What will people say about you? He was, in other words, reminding God. You are love. You are love. Don't do anything that is not of your character. Let it be your assignment today. Remind people of the love of God for them. Remind people of the love of God in this church for them. I pray that when you come every day into this church, when you see a new person come here, even when you know, this one is the number one tavern star of Manteding. Is the one who's going to all the taverns here, they know her. Show them the love of God here. Give them the hope of God here. Even when you see someone weak in their work with God, always try. Mama, please be serious with your prayer life. Say, see, please, you're falling now. Take seriously your prayer life. I will always try to speak to everyone. Please mind, mind your steps. You, here you are falling. Some will listen to us. Some they are used to hearing us. They just don't care. Then when the Holy Spirit says, don't talk to that person anymore. You just say, thank you, Lord. I leave it here. May the good God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now also, I want you to delight as well. 
In the mercies and kindness of God. The book of Lamentation says to us. Lamentations. Oh, Lamentations, 22, chapter 3, verse 22. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. You read another version, it says, because of the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed, because his mercies fail not. His mercies are new every morning. There's another version that says that. I'm sure you've heard this scripture before. Where it says the mercies of God are new every morning. They are renewed. You know, no matter what you do, God will always love you. You know, God will always show mercy and kindness to you. But it's not to say you must take advantage. Akiri. Akiri. Always remember that God is a merciful God. Always remember that God will always, even when you do something, God will know he will get angry, but he will relent. Amen. He will relent. Amen. Because You know, God always looks at us like this. He goes, I think, I, this is what I think. God looks at us in, in the sense, I I Only if he knew he would do bad. That is why we people come to church every day. We try to cancel them. We tell them, don't do this. It's bad. Don't do this. They go and do the very thing you were telling them not to do. Do we throw them away? No, we don't. They come here. We are the first ones to rush to them. We cradle them. The consequences of the consequences of of mujolo came. We still run to them. You say, my child. We don't say we told you so. We say, my child. Don't worry. God loves you. Us, we also love you. Come here to church. Don't take your mind off that boy. Take your mind off what happened. It happened. It happened. All you need to do is learn from it, isn't it? Sometimes they bring for us a baby here. When they bring us a baby, and they want to carry the baby. And they want to e even myself, Linda. me, I'm premature. I just too far large because of many of you here. I, no, I said I was made prematurely. I'm coco. Linda, get the real mukhakula na kisai 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 emi. Hey, but you never see us throwing the people away, isn't it? I think the banana la thala bato kan. The mercy and the compassion of God. He's showing it to us. Let us show it to other people. God loves you. God will always forgive you. God will always uphold you in his heart. Do the same to others. The more you do that, is the more you start to delight in him. You know why this service is so important? Because God wants you to see this side of him. You are so fixated on how God is a God of punishment. You are so fixated about how God is a God of punishment. Liduchi <laughs> or university English. Obsessed with that. The do's and the don'ts of salvation. Have you ever stopped and just realized the love of God? The pleasantness of his deeds. The ounce 
awesomeness of his deeds. Amen. Have you ever just stopped and realized that this God is marvelous? Have you ever just stopped to look at the word and say, Mara, this God, you know, the word says he is like this. You know, I delight myself in the word of God. So Have you ever just and come to church holding the Bible. Because it, uh, it makes you realize who God is. And when it makes you realize who God is, it reveals his heart. How can you not love someone who loves you so much? How can you not love someone who is so beautiful? If you, how can you not love someone who is able to provide for every need of your life? How can you not love someone who has such mercy and such compassion unto you? Moreover, how can you not be committed to such a person? Ah, people that do not have that. Y'all are committed to people who does not who are useless. Who are useless? They are fail. They don't put you anywhere. But you are after them. They don't love you. They speak bad. They speak bad about you behind ba your back. They are looking at you when you come to church. They count or that uh, they count. Ba-ba-la. Count. The reason he's going to church is because he has a frustration. You are busy with people who are useless. But the one in whom you must just delight every day. And just love him. And just adore him. And commit yourself. It's God. He'll never disappoint you. He'll never fail you. Please know that side of him. Please know that dimension of him. Please know the kind of heart that he has for you. You will ever be in a place to worship him. Whenever we lift up our hands and we raise our hands unto him and we say, Father, you are worthy and we say, Father, you are holy and we say, Father, there is none like you, O God and we say, Father, you are the Christ and we say, Lord God we have tried every God. We have tried all the other gods. And we saw them not to be faithful. But we have found you. And you are so faithful. We have found you. And you are so loving. We have found you. And you are so merciful. How can I not bow down before you? How can I not exalt your name? I cannot I glorify you. We give you honor. We give you glory. We exalt your name. We honor you, Lord. You are worthy, you are holy. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are Yahweh. We lift up your holy name, O God. We lift up your holy name, O God. We bow down before you, oh God. We just love you, oh God. We glorify your name. We honor your name. We exalt your name. We lift you up, oh God. Glory be to you, oh Glory be to you, oh Glory be to you, oh Thank you, Come on, worship him. Thank you, Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, Spirit of the you Let are us no worship name. his name. You are Let us worship his Lord. name. You are oh, 
adoration. Besides you, there is no other God. That deserves this glory. Besides you, there is no other God. That deserves this adoration. To you, God, be the glory forever and ever. You alone deserve the adoration. All other gods, they are nothing compared to you. You alone, our God, you alone deserve the glory. You alone deserve the honor. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, Malibiosa, <laughs> Father, we worship. Father, we adore. Father, we give you the praises. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. worthy. Jesus. 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 Do <laughs> You are a merciful God. You are the loving Father. You are the gracious Father. You are our Father. You are our Father. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Worship his name. Worship his name. He is an awesome God. He is a glorious God. He is a faithful God. You are worthy. You are mighty, O oh God. You are gracious, O oh God. You are glorious. We lift up your name. There is no place where you can hide from God. He does great and awesome deeds. You know, you read the book of um, Exodus, the whole Bible, in fact. You get to see. And then finally, in the New Testament, you see such a gracious act of love. You know, Hori, Mamma to Melan Vienna. I don't know what was a feeling. Lim Sulam Timuliri, Bosheba to Melan, Abafamata, our baby, she went on about the Afanakam Rahas, Fapanu. The book of John chapter 3, verse 16, in for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Mushomuwe ukwana bonela kalenga tulamti asaka walikuwa 
Especially sometimes who credit or love you, so I give another salibana. But I said, I'm not about to live with you, Kushabusu. Marna Chesso, oh, no. For the record, boy, she. Booker, I say, I read. You know, for no level, I'm a number to achieve. Look for me, for no level, which are a little kid. Come, <laughs> This is beautiful. because What's my pillar? That's why I can't Amen. Amen. Those who want or barapele lo bakula o ka no tlakapele ra go rapelela Awe 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 Arwa tsale mo tsimo tla ke ya ga e forile Ai man Ai man Haleluya Haleluya Ula ba ku huma Hallelujah. Thank you to our Facebook viewers. May the good Lord bless you. Till we meet again next week, Sunday, 10 o'clock on our teaching of God's with the Dweck Ministries.